What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's Fresh Build Friday. That's right, it's that time of the week again where we get you ready for the weekend with a brand new coil build. Are you looking for the next greatest cloud chucking, fog making, vapor producing build out there? Well, this is not going to be the video for you because today we're going to be doing something for all you mouth to lung vapors. So this one's going to be for all you guys that want the warm, dense vapor with tons of flavor and minimal vapor production. This one is a great mouth to lung setup and I really wanted to experiment with this sort of concept because it sets me up for future videos. So uh, hint, hint, wink, wink, you know, all that good stuff. I do have some other plans in mind for this particular style of wire. It's going to be a Fuse Clapton today, but in the micro style. So um, a little bit nervous about this one, not sure how it's going to come out. However, I'm pretty excited for it as well because I've never really tried anything like this. So with that being said, I'm really excited to get started with this one here. So let's go ahead and grab our mod, our wick, our addy, our wire, our tools, all that good stuff. Let's go down to the close-up view and build it up. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are ready to go here and uh, something a little bit different for you guys today. I've got a new kind of spinner rig going on. We've got this lovely suction cup vise generously gifted to me by my friend Dan. So Dan, big shout out to you. Many, many thanks, really do appreciate it. And uh, honestly, uh, I was definitely struggling with a lot of stuff uh, in the past with as far as like ribbon wire and that kind of thing because I didn't have a good enough spinner setup. So this should help me out and uh, hopefully it works out for us today. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. Today we're going to be working with some of this. This is 32 gauge uh, Temco Canthal and we've got some 40 gauge. Now I really wish I had something a little bit smaller for the outer wire wrap, but I think this will do it. So let's go ahead. Let's dive right into this one. Um, I'm going to take about a foot and a half or so of this 32 gauge. First step is straightening this wire out. And actually, I think I'm just going to have to kind of uh, bunch up the wire a little bit and even even to be able to straighten it out because the chuck of the drill doesn't even want to grab onto this stuff here. So let's see if a couple loops will do it. It ought to, I would say. Yeah, so it's holding pretty good right now. I think we are all set to go. So continuing on, step one, straighten your wire. All right, now that the wire is all straightened out, what we're gonna be doing is looping it through our spinner here. So we're just gonna take one end, just kind of loop it through the little D-ring, just like that. Grabbing onto both ends here, putting them together. And I'm actually gonna do a couple of manual twists on this stuff here just because I need a little bit more surface area inside the chuck of that drill. So I'm just gonna kind of mangle up this wire real quick and hopefully it'll stay in place. So that ought to do it. I think that should be good. Let's go ahead and move the drill in a little bit closer. Tighten everything down. Yeah, I think, think the grip is good. Now we can just kind of go ahead and smooth this part out here. Make sure it's nice and tight with no slack, which is good. Perfect, we are in good shape. And the next step is we're gonna put the 40 gauge in the chuck of the drill. This stuff is incredibly fine. It's kind of difficult to see. Um, so bear with me for a second here. I'll try to get this undone. But yeah, 40 gauge, I don't know if you guys have ever worked with it, but it is a royal pain in the ass. Have you guys worked with 40 gauge before? If so, let me know how it went. If not, um, would you be willing to try it out, you know? I mean, would you want to use 40 gauge? Or are you kind of planning on it or anything like that? Because uh, I dove right in the first time I used 40 gauge. I was a little bit nervous, but hey, you know what? I was a little bit nervous the first fuse clapped and I built too, but I ended up getting that done. So <laughs> there we go. You got to try. You got to try and you got to fail a couple of times in order to make it. But at the end of the day, uh, even if you don't succeed you will have tried and you have that knowledge so there you go that's my uh, inspirational quote of the day so as you can see I just kind of was able to slip it right in the chuck of the drill there and uh, that's gonna allow us to just wrap it around this uh, little leg of wire here a few times so that it's out of the way and it's got some tension going on and we are ready to spin it up so let's go ahead and give this a shot <laughs> Oh, 
All right, so we have officially made our Microfuse Clapton, and I gotta say, it wasn't as difficult as I was anticipating. You know, I figured this stuff would be a pain in the ass to work with, but um, I do have a lot of spins in this thing here, so we're just gonna uh, try to get those out as much as possible by reversing our drill, just pulsing it a few times, And that's looking pretty good. Now, it's not the cleanest thing I've ever built. And honestly, it's really, really difficult to get it right on camera. But uh, I feel like if I was to do this again off camera, I would be able to do this with no problem, um, especially with the help of that vice. Honestly, I got to say, Dan, another big, 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 huge thank you to you. Uh, it really does help out a lot. So if you guys want one of those things, I'm sure you can pick them up at your local hardware store for a couple of bucks. But uh, yeah, that thing is great. So here is our wire ready to go. And I know it's going to be way too tiny to see in this shot here, but uh, I'll splice in a couple of pictures real quick so you guys can get a feel for what we're working with here. And uh, yeah, this stuff is absolutely tiny. Anyways, let's go ahead and build ourselves a coil here. Um, I'm thinking three millimeter for this one. You know, I always use three millimeter. It's just my go-to and it's worked for me so far. So I feel like if we do three millimeter, no, you know what? We're going to do two and a half millimeter on this one. I, I, I don't want to risk it. Um, I do want a bigger diameter coil than you would think necessary, but, um, I, I would think that two and a half would be more than enough with this one here. And I want to do a few more wraps. So we're trying to bring up the resistance. You know, this is going to be mouth to lung. Um, so let's see. I think what we're going to do is seven wraps uh, with the leads opposing. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And this stuff is uh, pretty darn tricky to work with. So just try to keep it as straight as possible. I mean, if it twists in the middle, I'm really not super duper worried about it, but yeah, I guess that's a possibility. One thing I've been doing recently is just kind of spinning the actual jig um, while the, I'm holding the piece of wire tight. And this seems to work pretty darn good. Um, I don't know why I just started doing it, but uh, it's working. So screw it. <laughs> uh, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we got seven full wraps. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's super springy, though. All right, well, let's do that again. Uh, I think that's seven. It's either seven or eight. I'm going to have to recount off camera real quick, but uh, I think we got it here. This stuff is extremely springy. Uh, if you feel the need to anneal it beforehand, then definitely do that. But yeah, this stuff is extremely springy. All right, so I did have one extra wrap in there, but you know what? Uh, it's really difficult to see. These lights are pretty bright in here and my eyesight isn't what it used to be. So let's go ahead and install this thing, shall we? Um, placement of the coil should be pretty easy. Everything seems to line up pretty nice. I'm going to drop it in here like so, just kind of get my alignment pretty much all squared away. And uh, then I'm going to just tighten her down. So let's go ahead and do that now. We've got this side here. We'll do that first. Got to be careful. You got to make sure this wire is absolutely trapped. Otherwise, it's just going to slip out all over the place and be no good to us. So. Oh, jeez, see? See what happens? See what happens? You stop focusing for one single second. All right, now I'm going to pull the wire on the other side super duper tight because I don't want this coil to be loose at all. I want it to be tight around the bit before I secure it. I'm actually going to install it the other way so I can tighten this thing down with the bit through the coil. So there we go. Ooh, you guys, I can't believe we pulled it off. I shouldn't speak too soon because you never know. It could still just snap. Oh, man. Stressful. All right. We're almost there. I know it's just going to start warping and moving when we uh, heat it up, but get it most of the way there. Okay. Snip. Snip. All right. Moment of truth. Is it over one ohm? That's what I'm shooting for here, guys. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> Point 0.6. Uh-oh. Uh, it's a little low. Point 0.7. Oh, man. It's jumping all over the place. 1.16. 1.11. Well, it's, now it's bouncing around above 1 ohm. That's good. 1.6. I don't know if that's too high or just right. I mean, the coil's pretty good looking, I gotta say. Coil's looking all right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, this is gonna be tricky to wick it because these wicking ports are rather large, so hopefully we can fit enough cotton through there to uh, fill those holes up. Should be fun, guys. Should be interesting. We're hovering, hovering around 1.7 now. I'm just going to snug up the screws a little bit more. Oh man, it's moving that coil around too. We've got to be super careful with this one. It's been a very, very long time since I've built anything even remotely that high. But look at that. We've got a functioning coil. Thing gets hot pretty quick too. All right, let's wig it. Well, all right, guys, here it is all wicked up, and I'm not even sure if it's going to leak or not yet because I haven't put the tank section on and filled it, but I wanted to show you guys a vapor production shot anyways, and today we're actually going to be vaping it at a whopping 10 watts. Yes, that's right. This should be called the low wattage build video, but yeah, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Well, it works. There's a plus. Looks pretty nice. I think it'll vape pretty nice. I might bump it up a little bit, maybe to about 12, 13 watts or so, but you know what? Gotta say, pretty happy with it. So let's go back to the main screen, have a quick vape on this thing, and we'll talk about it some more. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the build. Now let's talk about the coil that we just put in this Aries RTA here. And I got to say, testing out the Aries has been an absolute pleasure. It's a lovely device, and it's kind of brought my love back for mouth-to-lung vaping. And I just wanted to put something in there with a crazy amount of flavor, and I think we did just that today. But we'll get on to that in a second. Starting it off today with the heat factor, I actually bumped this thing all the way up to a whopping 15 watts. I know, pretty crazy. Uh, the final resistance came out to one. 1.8 ohms. That is something I haven't done in a long, long, long time. I really can't even remember the last time I vaped at 1.8 ohms. And with that, the heat factor on this one is just where I want it to be. It's absolutely spot on at 15 watts. At 10 watts, it just wasn't quite cutting it for me. It was just a little bit cool, and I didn't really get a full mouth-to-lung experience, so I think I have it dialed in just right for me. And my second category is the ramp up and ramp down time. The ramp up time on this one is very, very minimal because I feel like I've got it a little bit overclocked right now at 15 watts. It's hitting 5.18 volts when I hit the fire button, and that just ramps up instantly. You get that full mouth vapor real quick, and that's exactly what I like. Um, you don't even have to take a primer puff with this one. You just do it right off the bat, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and take a puff off this thing. We'll check out the ramp down time. And the ramp down time is minimal as expected. Honestly, about the one second mark is when it stops sizzling altogether. And that's to be expected with this one here, obviously. With a coil that doesn't get super duper hot, it's not gonna have that long drawn out ramp down time. And my third category today is the difficulty of this build. This one was actually a little bit easier than I expected and that is definitely a good thing. Honestly, I would recommend this one to anyone that can build Claptons or Fuse Claptons and wants to try their hand at something a little bit smaller and wants that really good mouth to lung vaping experience. You can use this one in any sort of mouth-to-lung tank, like if you have a K-Fun or a Russian 91 or the Ares, obviously, Berserker, any one of those great little mouth-to-lung tanks, this is going to be absolutely phenomenal in. And for my final category, which is the flavor on this build, right now I'm getting amazing flavor out of it. Really excited about this one. Uh, I'm vaping this Hingham Hill Rhetoric. It's a tobacco with some dessert spices in it, and it is amazing. I've got it at 12 milligram, and I am getting a full, bold 
flavor of the tobacco. You get a little bit of the sweetness and a little bit of that dessert spiciness as well, kind of like a nutmeggy, cinnamony kind of thing going on. But you get all of those flavors and they just kind of roll across your tongue from the inhale all the way through to the exhale. So that about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to click that notification bell right next to the subscribe button if you want to be alerted whenever I upload videos. Big shout out to you guys in the notification squad for getting here early. Don't forget to leave a comment right down there in the box below about mouth to lung vaping, this build, or if you have a suggestion for a future episode of Fresh Build Friday, just leave it on down there in the comments box. Also check out the description of this video. That's where you're going to find the advocacy and my social media links. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, Always vape on.